Here's question one from May 2012. Uh, Simon's part-time job. Simon works in a supermarket. His um, hourly pay is 55.35. In February, he worked for 32 hours. How much money did Simon earn in February? So that's simply 32 hours times 55.35 makes 1,771.20. Question 2. Simon expects to earn 24,000 kroner in 2012. How many hours does he have to earn, does he have to work in 2012 in order to earn 24,000 kroner? So that's just the 24,000 divided by his hourly pay, divided by 55.35, makes 434 hours. Obviously, that's got to be a whole number of hours. So um, if it's not a whole number, you're going to have to round it up to the next one up. Um, because if you round it down, then he hasn't earned the amount of money. Simon has to pay 8% in deductions on his pay, um, and then he gets the rest of the pay paid out to him. How much money does Simon expect to get paid out to him on average per month in 2012? Okay, so um, his pay is 2000 before the deductions, because he pays 8%, then he's left with 92%. So I've got 92% or 92 hundredths of 2,000. So 92 on the top, 100 on the bottom for 92%. Times the 2,000 makes 1,840. And uh, you might want to show where you got 92 from. So you might instead write it as 100 minus 8. To show where you got the 92 from. Okay, here's a question that you can use a spreadsheet for, um, and it says that his taxable income is his um, yearly pay minus various things, various deductions, um, and uh, those deductions are 4.4% and 8%. And it says, investigate um, how much Simon's annual pay has to be in order for his taxable income to be 32,200. Um, and it suggests you can use uh, IT tools, obviously a spreadsheet, um, or you could do it analytically. So first of all, I'm going to look at how to do it with just the numbers and without a spreadsheet. I'm saying that what he gets is 87.6%, because if you consider his original pay to be the 100%, and then they take off 4.4% and another 8%, then he's left with 87.6% of what he earned. So that 87.6%, that's his taxable income, and the question wants that to be 32,200. If the 87.6% is 32,200, then we can work out what 100% would be. So 1% is that amount divided by 87.6%, and then 100% would be that amount times 100. And if you do that, that comes to 36,758. So in order for his taxable income to be 32,200, then his pay before those things were deducted has to be 36,758. So you can do it with the numbers if you're good with percentages, but you can also do it with a spreadsheet. And I'm going to look at how we can do that with a spreadsheet now.
So here I am in Excel. Probably want to make this uh, a little bit bigger. This is all in English, of course. I have mine in English, but um, things tend to be more or less in the same place. Also, I'm I'm on a Mac doing this, so um, it might be slightly different if you're doing it on a PC. But hopefully, you'll get the idea. So I'm going to type the various things um, in the boxes as they are in the question. So uh, Oslun. So those are the four um, things. Now you can see they, they run over the edge of the box. So I can just go between the A and B there at the top and drag that out and it resizes the box for me. Okay, so let's just say his uh, annual pay was 24,000, for example. Um, then the first deduction is 4.4%. So I've, there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could say this cell here is going to equal um, that cell there, which is B1 with the 24,000 in it, and then times, that's a star sign on Excel, 4.4 and divided by, that's a slash, 100. So I can work out 4.4% that way. Or another way I can do it is to say that that cell there equals that cell, B1, times 4.4%. And if I write the percent sign, then it understands what 4.4% is, and I don't have to write the bit about dividing by 100. So either way, it gives us the right answer. The next deduction is 8% of the yearly pay. So I'll write equals and then just point at the cell, that one, which is B1, times 8%. And it works out that that's 1920. And his taxable income is, so equals that one, B1, his yearly pay, minus the deductions, minus that one, B2, and minus that one, B3. And then it works that out to be 21,024. And then the question is, uh, investigate what his annual pay has to be, the top one, in order for his taxable income to be 32,200. Okay, now that we've got the formula set up, we can play about with this to change the amount he's earning, his uh, Orslun, his annual pay, and see how that affects his taxable income. Because every time we change the top one, all of the others change as well because they're related to it with a formula. So if I make that 25,000, then the bottom one becomes 21,900. So we're trying to change the top one so that the bottom one becomes 32,200, as it says in the question. So let's see what happens if he's earning 40,000, then his taxable income becomes 35,000, that's, and 40. That's a, that's a bit higher than we want it to be. So let's try 35,000 in the top. All right, that's, that's too low in the bottom. Let's try 36,000, too low. 37,000. Uh, that's a bit too high, so it's going to be between 36 and 37,000. Let's try 37, now let's try 36,500. Too low. Let's try 36,600. Too low. Let's try 36,700. Too low. Let's try 36. 800, bit too high, so let's try 36,750, bit too low, 
36760. Little bit too high. Uh, 36755. Too low. 56. Too low. 57. Too low. 58. Bit too high. So uh, 57 and 50. Too low. Uh, try 0.6. Too low. 0.7. Too low. 0.8. Too low. 0.9. Too low. 0.95, too low, 0.96, too low, 0.97, too low, 0.98, bit too low, 0.99, bit too low, and then we already tried 58. Bit too high, so it, it's it's somewhere just about between um, thirty six thousand seven hundred and fifty eight and thirty six thousand seven hundred and fifty seven point nine nine. So we'll get just about as near as we're going to get by rounding that to the nearest kroner. So so the, the nearest kroner, um, the nearest we get is if his annual pay is 36,758. And of course that ties exactly in with what we worked out doing it analytically. So if you're not very good with the percentages, then the spreadsheet can be a good way of getting to the answer. But for other people, doing it an analytical way like this is much better. You see, I got to the answer much quickly, much more quickly doing it with the math than playing about with the spreadsheet. And then I just put a comment, um, Devilsir Simons Oslund, Oslund Skaver, Sextravatus and Suhuner Order Haltres. Okay, so that's my thing neatly set out. So for the last question, I, I, I wrote some workings with the analytical answer, but I could just as well have said, uh, see the attached thing and submitted a printout from the spreadsheet. Those are the marks, three, three, four, four.